Welcome to Tech Brothers with Dhamma. In this video, we are going to learn how to get the list of pipelines, data sets, triggers, and other objects from Azure Data Factory. So this scenario is very valid. Sometime you are migrating your data factory from uh, maybe one resource to another resource, from maybe one subscription to another subscription, and uh, you would like to know if all the pipeline has been uh, uh, migrated successfully and data sets and the triggers and all that also sometimes you just want to track that uh, how many pipelines you have because there are uh, tons of times uh, you are uh, deleting the pipeline creating the pipelines and uh, it is uh, kind of a little hard to sort out uh, with the name in and all that so uh, that it can be also helpful so we will get the pipeline names and data set names and put into the SQL table then it will make our life much easier uh, to sort them and see them and and, uh, you know if we need to group them according to naming convention we can uh, group them as well now let's go ahead and uh, take a look first of all uh, what we need here uh, we need uh, our table so where we would like to save that information um, so I have created this table uh, definition uh, sorry so this is the definition of the table so I'm calling this call, uh, table ADO objects so id is going to be identity column and then object type that's going to be pi pipeline data set or whatever then object name that's going to be the pipeline name or data set name and then just create a time and i'm filling that information with the get data also id is identity column now after that i have created a store procedure because i'm going to get this information such as object type object name and then pass that value to the db.insert into the ADF object. Um, so we have a name and object type. Uh, there is a lot more information there that you can uh, grab and put into the table, but I'm just uh, using uh, two of these uh, uh, values. Uh, now these are input parameters and uh, then uh, I'm inserting into the DBO object uh, ADF objects uh, table. Um, so that's it uh, simply. And uh, we are gonna take this uh, uh, let me take this definition and everything and go to our database called tech browser it and the tech browser db so here that's where we will be creating these objects so i'm gonna go ahead and paste it here and first of all we will create this table now the table is created then second part what we are going to do we are going to create our store procedure i will give you these definitions in the description so you can use them as well now if we select the data in from this table there is nothing in this table as of now let's uh, click on the tables and it should be here so that's the table uh, we have uh, just created and there is a store procedure we have uh, created uh, so the store procedure is uh, insert into the objects so right there okay so we all set here uh, the uh, link uh, from the microsoft documents that's what we are going to use it uh, this is a link uh, so i'm going to copy this link uh, and uh, take you to the uh, this uh, internet uh, post or uh, uh, URL and here uh, that's the link what we are going to use uh, we are going to use uh, this HTTP link uh, and uh, we will uh, use in the web activity of uh, ADF to get the, all that information uh, so I have copied this link uh, uh, right now if I will go ahead and copy and uh, I will go back to my SSMS and that's the link I have uh, right there so I'm going to delete the get part out of that uh, and then uh, just left with the HTTP this part uh. so see here after the subscription it is asking me provide my subscription so I'm gonna go to data factory here and uh, in my data factory from which I would like to get all the list of those uh, um, pipelines or if you have different uh, um, at the data factory you would like to extract the information I believe you will be able to do that as well as long as uh, the other data fact this data factory has permission on that resource group so um, here I'm uh, extracting from the same data factory where my pipelines are but I believe you will be able to point to the different uh, data factory as well and get that information so it is asking me subscription so I'm gonna copy my subscription from here and then uh, provide that in the link right there uh, so I just delete that part or just uh, overwrite on that and then uh, what you need uh, next uh, you need a resource group uh, so here's my resource group I'm gonna go back and get the resource group so this that's my resource group provide the resource group name here and next uh, what you're gonna do you're gonna go to the data factories name so as I was saying that if you have different data factory name you can get the information so from other data factory as well you can run the pipeline uh, uh, this pipeline in different data factory and get the information from different data factory 
Okay, so here it says pipelines. So that means uh, it is going to get us uh, the pipelines uh, information. If I will change to data sets here, it's going to get me data sets. So we are going to do that test uh, anyways. Uh, so let me copy this and uh, I will go to my Azure Data Factory. And here I'm going to cancel this. Uh, I'm going to create a new pipeline. And uh, that pipeline, I'm going to call this pipeline PL underscore get ADF info. Okay, so that's the name of the pipeline. And uh, also one thing I want to tell you, if you have not published uh, this uh, Azure pipeline or uh, any other uh, um, objects, uh, that information will not be extracted. Uh, so you have to publish this. Uh, so first of all, uh, what we would like to do, we are going to use the web activity here. So in the web activity, we will provide that URL we just uh, build uh, and we are going to paste right there. And uh, once we paste there, and uh, in the select method, uh, what we are going to do, we are going to use get. Uh, once you do that, uh, you're going to copy this part uh, and uh, then uh, paste uh, right here at the end uh, is going to ask you authentication. Um, you're going to go and call it manage Dunty, and here you will paste that. Uh, now, if I will go ahead and execute this uh, uh, web activity as of now, I might get error. And I know the reason why I would get error, but uh, let's uh, see if I get error, then I will show you what happened there. So you see right there, that's uh, saying uh, does not have authentication to perform action. No? Pipelines read over scope of this uh, pipeline resource group. Uh, so it means this pile data factory does not have permission uh, uh, to read the data from the resource group. Uh, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go back to my portal and in the portal, we will go to the uh, resource group. Uh, once we go to the resource group, we are going to go to the access control and uh, here I'm going to go ahead and add a role. So in this role, uh, what I'm going to do, I can go ahead and add as a contributor and then uh, select contributor and then uh, manage identity and then uh, I can select uh, the member. In the member, it is uh, going to give you data factory, right? And uh, now you select the data factory. So now we should be all good, assign and review. And uh, it is uh, adding that role. Role has been added. Now if I go back uh, and execute this pipeline, it should be fine. Uh, because now I use the manage entity and I have added that uh, ADF to the resource group. Uh, still it's failed. So I'm going to wait. Uh, sometimes what happened, it takes a little bit of time uh, to work on that permission. So. OK, so the permissions, after the permissions, everything is working fine. Just give it a couple of minutes uh, before uh, all the permissions are uh, deployed, and uh, then you should be fine. Now here, you can click uh, and see all that information. So that's where uh, I extracted the information, such as uh, uh, right here, outside the values, we have output values, then we have a name. Sorry, right there, name. So name, uh, that's our pipeline name, and then we have type. Okay, and if uh, further you want to go further ahead and uh, select uh, uh, the activities and uh, you want to save the activities in the same table, you can do that as well. So you have to uh, navigate all the way to those uh, places as well. So it is reading the entire definition right here. So you can see right there, you can select any data. For me, there are only two things important, the name of the pipeline and the, the type of resource. So that's what I am going to use in my um uh, demo but for you you can uh, use whatever you want to use uh, you can use uh, maybe ids as well you can uh, use uh, the further properties and activities you know and uh, whatever uh, is needed now we are fine here so we are going to close this part uh, and next uh, what i'm going to do i'm going to use uh, the for each loop so why I use the for each loop? Because I would like to uh, loop through those list of the pipeline it is extracting. Um, as of now, it is extracting three pipelines because uh, I did not publish the fourth one. No. So three pipelines, then I will need to get the type and name and then put into my table. Uh, so I'm going to go to settings here, and then uh, I'm going to go right here, add uh, dynamic contents. Uh, and here I will select uh, web activity dot output dot value. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Now from the values that we have name, type, and all that information, we can extract them. So this is good, and inside the for each loop, I'm going to bring uh, my store procedures. So here's my store procedure, and uh, in the store procedure, uh, uh, I need uh, to go ahead and create a link service, uh, and I'm gonna go, and uh, here I'm gonna use the Azure SQL database. Uh, now, once I do that, it's going to ask me subscription, it's going to ask me my uh, database server name, and then uh, my database name, and then my username and password. 
I'm going to test test success, successful. Let's create this uh, linked service. Now the link service is created and uh, what you can do from here you can uh, go to the drop down and here is our store procedure. Now we know that uh, there are two parameters. Uh, one is called name and uh, that's uh, uh, one and another parameter we had uh, is uh, the type. So uh, object type. Remember this is first one is a name parameter and the second one is object type. So I'm going to go back here and uh, provide the second name of the parameter and then uh, here we will be providing a values. Uh, so remember that uh, from the web activity we are providing uh, values to the uh, for each loop. So we are going to click right there and in the for each loop we know that we can extract multiple things such as name, such as type. So that's there are different properties that's coming from the web activity. So here we will go back again for each loop dot item dot type. So that will do our uh, both things and I have shown you already like uh, uh, why we have a uh, item right here if you guys remember that. So I'm selecting this uh, name and type. That's all we are doing from the our values. So we gave uh, like oh, uh, for each loop tell we told the for each loop go ahead and uh, read all that values. And then inside the for each loop we are telling uh, the store procedure hey read only the name and type from each of the time when it's going to loop through. Okay, so that's good. And uh, now we go back here, go to store procedures, and looks good, no big deal. And uh, now what we can do, we can simply execute our pipeline. Okay, our pipeline has been completed successfully. And you can see that we, the web activity, it read all those contents. And then uh, the, it uh, has given to the for each loop. And for each loop knows that there are three pipelines. And uh, once uh, those uh, pipelines information is passed to the store procedure, it read the type and uh, the name of that uh, and then it has written to the table. Now what we are going to do, we are going to select the data from this table and uh, here we will paste this and now I'm going to run the select statement on the our object table. So you can see that ID is coming just right here and that these are the name of the our pipelines and here are the objects so object type like a uh, data factory backslash factories and so these are pipelines so this is just the time when the record was inserted now this looks uh, perfect and what we are going to do here we are going to go and make some changes and uh, if you remember that uh, uh, here i don't have any really data sets and all that but uh, if uh, we want to create a data set so you can simply change and uh, just change to the data sets here so i'm going to go ahead and publish the fourth pipeline as well and uh, let me see if i can go ahead and create one or two data sets uh, just for sample so i will let's call it uh, blob storage okay the limited is fine and now i can go and uh, use this and here i can use input and uh, okay first row has header okay so i'm going to go ahead and publish this uh, data set as well and uh, also i'm going to clone this uh, multiple times and once i clone this i can uh, rename if i want and uh, i'm going to call this one ds score blob connection okay so we have we have three data sets here and uh, then uh, we have uh, four pipelines. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and publish as I so told you like if you do not publish then uh, uh, your uh, pipeline is not going to be reading those uh, uh, unsaved or published uh, pipelines or the objects. Uh, so all these uh, items has been published now and uh, we are going to go back here to the our get ADF info. So we will uh, truncate this table and then uh, reload. So I'm going to go ahead and truncate and truncate table and let's rerun for the pipeline first so i'm going to go ahead and debug okay this has been completed successfully and now you can see that it is executed four times because there are four pipelines for for the each of the entry is running by store procedure one time now let's go back here and let's take a look on the data and here you can see that uh, this has uh, all the list of the pipelines from the Azure Data Factory. And uh, the object type is a uh, pipeline. So now I'm going to go ahead and make some small changes uh, because I would like to only read uh, the list of the uh, data sets. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and instead of pipelines, I'm just going to say data sets. Um, so we do that and uh, now we can publish or even don't publish is fine because we are just going to read uh, uh, 
from the data sets here and already this pipeline has been published so we should be good here let's say uh, see the execution it is executing right now and uh, one two three so it uh, one two three see the uh, data sets we have so as of now I don't have a whole lot of uh, objects uh, such as triggers and all that but you can use uh, read the triggers and I'm sure you will can you can read the data flows you can read all those uh, different objects names uh, by using uh, uh, that technique so now if you go to web activity here and uh, it is uh, showing you the information so uh, same thing we have a link services here and uh, then uh, it uh, read uh, the type and the name of that uh, so we are good here and uh, now let me take you to the um, table and if I run this query as of now it has four records uh, now it should have seven records uh, and in those seven records uh, these are the three ones that come in with the data sets uh, so you see uh, right here the limited text the limited text copy and the DS blob connection uh, so these are our data sets uh, so this is how you will be able to read uh, all the objects uh, from your data factory and put into some table and then uh, you know you can have just uh, a record or a report maybe uh, you might want to run a daily report like oh okay how many pipelines we have uh, uh, total how many data sets we have in total how many um, triggers we have in total um, you know so uh, this is just a starting point and uh, then you can go further into and also get like list of activities uh, number name of activities for each of the pipeline because once you read the JSON you can uh, read multiple uh, parts of that and put into some uh, uh, table and just create some reports out of that uh, I will uh, go ahead and put this information in the uh, description so you can uh, start using from there um, thank you very much for watching please subscribe my channel and I will see you guys in next video